Welcome to ECA Limo, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the introduction to physics, we discussed the branches of physics, and one of the branch of physics that we discussed was geometrical optics. We defined geometrical optics as the study of the behavior of light as it travels in different media. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss how light travels in a uniform, all homogeneous media. And what you are going to realize is that when light travels in a uniform media, or a media with a homogeneous optical density, it's going to travel in a straight line, hence the title of our topic like linear come from the word line propagation of light later we are going to focus how we can change the direction of light in what we call reflection at plane surfaces my name is albert i hope you will enjoy the topic and this lesson by the end of this lesson I expect you to be able to explain what we mean by optics and light and then explain what we mean by like linear propagation of light and then finally explain and give examples of sources of light. So what is optics? Optics is one of the main branches of physics which focuses on the behavior of light as it travel in different or in various media. When we talk about media in physics, we are focusing on the three main states of matter, that is solid, liquid, and then gas. So what we are going to focus in optics is how light behave when it moves from solids, that's one media, to liquid, that's another media, to gas, and that is another media. However, what we are going to realize is that when light might be traveling in one media like in solids, it will travel differently if it travel in different solids, since different solids will have what we call different optical density. They will have different optical density. So what we are going to see is that different substances have different optical density so it does not mean that when it's traveling in solids it will behave the same no different solids have different optical density different liquids have different optical density and different gases have different optical density so light will behave differently when it's traveling in materials which have different optical density but for the interest of this topic we will be focusing on light traveling in a homogeneous in a homogeneous medium or in a uniform medium uniform uh, medium so here we are going to talk about light traveling in a material or in a medium which has a homogeneous or a uniform optical density so in optics also we will be focused on the instrument which or which use the idea of optics like cameras uh, in this topic of form one that is rectilinear propagation of light we will focus on one instrument which we call the pinhole camera we will be focusing on a pinhole camera and a pinhole camera is the camera which we used to take photos in the past during the christmas where one needs to kneel down for them to take photos so we are going to see why they needed to kneel down for them to take uh, good photos. Then later, we will talk about light and we will define light as a form of energy. And what is important here is that light regulates our daily life. It's because of light that we can be able to see the shapes, the color, and everything in our daily activities. So back to the title of our topic, Rectilinear propagation of light and as I always tell my students if we interpret correctly the title or the meaning of the title then you will be knowing 
what we will discuss from the beginning to the end of the topic because a title is the summary of the entire topic so in this case if you are going to understand all know what we mean by rectilinear propagation of light then you will be done with the topic what will remain is just enjoying the physics behind it so what is rectilinear propagation of light rectilinear propagation of light is a property of light so from today just know that what we are going to discuss the entire topic is the property of light and what property of light is this that light travels in a straight line so we are going to study a property of light one of the property of light that light travels in a straight line but for light to travel in a straight line then it must be traveling in a medium of homogeneous propagation density or homogeneous optical density so entirely in this topic we are going to study a property of light which is light traveling in a straight line and this light which is traveling in a straight line we are going to investigate it when it's moving in a homogeneous optical density or propagation density and then the key statement in this topic is that light does not travel around corners this is the key statement so if you see light which is traveling around corners in a homogeneous optical density then that is not rectilinear propagation of light here we are only going to focus on light which is traveling in a straight line then for us to prove that light indeed travel in a straight line we are going to perform series of experiments but one of the strongest uh, proof is that the formation of shadows for example if you have an opaque object here this opaque opaque object and then you have a wall here this is a wall and then you have a source of a light here this is the source of light so if this source of light is going to emit some rays so one ray will go where we don't have the opaque object it will go to the wall here it will go to the wall because we don't have an opaque object but where we have an opaque object this light cannot penetrate through this light will only knock this opaque object and then behind this uh behind this opaque object there will be no light now this one will be seen on the wall as a shadow this one now will be seen as a shadow now if light was not traveling in a straight line or if light could travel around the corners then it means this light could have reached here make a corner and go if it indeed it was traveling around the corners it will make a corner and go because it will meet an opaque object it will find another route it will go to the wall but since light does not travel around the corners then we are going to realize that it cannot make uh, or it cannot bend or it cannot um, travel around the corners it will stop at the opaque object and then behind it there will be a shadow so that's one of the proof that light does not travel around corners since we are now aware what we will be focusing from the beginning to the end of this topic a property of light called the rectilinear propagation of light which means light traveling in a straight line it's important to know that for this light to travel it must have come from a source somewhere so here we are also going to identify different sources of light and then here we have two main sources of light the first one is luminous sources and then the second one is non-luminous sources so what are luminous sources just from your chemistry a luminous flame it means a flame which a gas is burning when the air hole is closed when the air hole is closed it means the gas from the pipe is the only one which is burning without the influence of air or of oxygen from the air hole so it means that flame is original flame from the gas it's a natural source from the gas itself without any other influence so when we are going to focus on luminous sources also here we are going to focus on objects which produces their own light object which are original which produce their original light without any other influence and a good example of 
luminous sources is like the sun, the candle, electric lamps, glowing worms, you know glowing worms, the one that you see glittering at night, and many others which produces their own light. So it's important to note here that luminous means without any influence. They produce their original light without any alter alterations. This, this is different when we talk about non-luminous sources. And for us to understand non-luminous sources better, I want to refer you to your chemistry. When you talk about non-luminous flame, non-luminous flame, you talk about this, you said this flame is formed when air hole is open. It means the gas from the pipe combined with oxygen from the air through the air hole to form this flame. So what does this mean? The gas does not depend on itself. It depends on oxygen for this flame to be produced. Otherwise, when the gas burns on itself, it forms a luminous flame and it depends on itself. But now here it depends on oxygen to produce an aluminous flame. So also it means for non-luminous sources, these are sources which don't depend on themselves to produce light. They depend on other sources for them to produce light. So non-luminous objects, these are objects which do not give, these objects do not give their own light. They only reflect light from luminous objects. So for non-luminous uh, sources to produce light, they only reflect. There must be a luminous source for an luminous source to reflect light from it. And we're going to look at the case of a moon and how a moon gives us uh, light at night. So examples in this case, we have a moon, which we're going to see here. Then we have a mirror. Remember when you look at the mirror, it means rays from your face reach the mirror and then the mirror reflected them back to your eyes. Then we have a paper for you to see this piece of paper. Light from the paper must come into your eyes. Otherwise, you cannot read in the darkness because the paper will not get the light which it will reflect to your eyes. And then another one is you. No one can see you if you are in darkness, but you can see someone who is in the light. In the darkness, you don't have light to reflect. But if you are in the light, you have light to reflect to someone's eyes for them to see you. Now, I want to focus on how a moon gives us light at night. If this is the earth, this is our earth here, and then one side of this earth is dark. This is the dark part. This is where we are, darkness at night. Then we have a moon here. We have a moon there. And then the sun is on this side, which is on daylight. This is the day. This is the part of the earth, which is on day. Then now, since we cannot receive the rays of the sun directly, then this rays will be, will, be, will be moving to the moon like that. They will reach the moon directly. But when they try to reach us, the earth, which is opaque, will block them. So that's why we are at the dark or at night. Now, when the moon receives this rays, this is the moon. When the moon receives this rays, it will reflect them to our dark part here. So it will reflect them to this surface here. Now, this light which it reflects is the one which now we see as the light from the moon. But generally, the moon does not produce its own light. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lessons, we will be just discussing how to prove that light travels in a straight line and the application of light traveling in a straight line. And then later, we will focus on a reflection of light and its applications. Then we wind up the topic.